Hi, I'm Doug Horchak, and this is Verse by Verse, a short podcast all about exploring the insights and lessons of the inspired Word of God. Today, we're looking at a very interesting comment made by a prophet of God in Malachi 3, verse 16. Let's start by reading this verse. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. Who wrote these words and why? The prophet Malachi recorded these words. He was a prophet of God sent to the Jews and all Israel who had resettled in Judea in the 5th century BC. By Malachi's time, the Jews had been back in their homeland for more than a hundred years. The temple had been rebuilt and the city of Jerusalem had been restored. However, during that period of time, the Jews began to drift, to turn away from God's law and way of life. And Malachi was sent to correct and guide God's people to live a more righteous life. Toward the close of the book, it becomes clear that God was not only speaking to the Jews of that time, but also speaking to all of mankind, and more specifically, those that comprise God's spiritual temple, the Church of God. In chapter 3 of Malachi, we find an end-time setting where the return of Jesus Christ is referred to. God then gives a call to repentance to those who have departed from him. And in verses 16 through 18, God makes a distinction between the wicked world we live in and the righteous people who serve him. Notice in verse 16 how God refers to those that are faithful to him at the time of the end. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. Let's take a deeper look at the words God uses here and see if we, as Christians today, can glean any lessons or encouragement. The statement, those who feared the Lord, what does fearing the Lord actually mean? Does it mean being paralyzed and terrified in the presence of God? Well, when we take a look at it, we see that the Hebrew word used here actually means to fear, to respect, to revere. Such a reverence of fearing the Lord is viewed as a positive quality of respecting and revering God. As shown in many Bible examples in Exodus and in the Psalms, this fear acknowledges God's good intentions and His power to bring about His will, something God's people should appreciate and reflect upon. Then it says that these people spoke to one another. Other translations actually say spoke often one to another. But then notice the next few words in this verse, and the Lord listened and heard them. The point is, God's paying attention to our personal lives, to what we do and what we say. There is something very important to God when he sees his servants building unity in relationships with one another, no doubt sharing their mutual convictions about God's way of life and the Christian journey they're on. So we see that God is listening and interested to our conversations. This really makes me think of the many times that I have around a dinner table, at a picnic or a church service, been engaged in conversation with brethren of like mind. Just like a good parent loves to see their children doing the right thing, treating others with love and respect, so it is that God is interested in how we interact and get along with each other as his children. Then we continue reading in verse 16, so a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. What a wonderful encouragement that God will not forget the fellowship and the love we express and show one to another. So much so that such interaction between his people is worthy of being recorded in a book. I know that's truly amazing. Every time I read this scripture, it brings to mind the memories that my wife and I have of our children growing up, the many photo albums we have of our family, all of which brings back memories of their accomplishments in grade school and their participation in sports, cherished memories we have of the good things they did and accomplished as children, all of which has given my wife and I joy and pleasure as parents over the years. But just think how much more so that our God, our Heavenly Father, cherishes the righteous commitment of his children to each other and to his way of life, especially at a time when the world is headed in such a wrong and dark direction. These words of the prophet Malachi should serve as a reminder to us all that our Heavenly Father is very interested in us, in our lives. He notices what we do, he notices what we say, and he notices what we think. The point is this, God knows our efforts to seek and serve him, and he will take care of us. Verse by Verse is a companion podcast to the Daily Bible Verse blog, which you can find on the Life, Hope, and Truth Learning Center. Check out the show notes for more.